What's going on, Bigger Pockets? It's Matt Faircloth. So today we're going to talk about what I learned by raising three million dollars for a real estate project, which is this is a gargantuan amount. I know there's other uh, syndicators and folks that have raised money and stuff like that. For me, this is an enormous amount of money. It's three times bigger than any other thing that I've raised up until now. And I learned a ton by raising this amount of money from private investors to uh, come in on a deal, from limited partners to invest in an apartment building project. So I want to share with you guys what I learned. Because if you guys are looking to raise money for your deals, there are some perhaps some lessons I can give you here um, for those of you guys that want to raise through a million, or even these lessons apply for smaller raises too. I mean, I've raised, you know, 50,000 in equity for a project. I've raised, you know, anything between 50 grand all the way up to um, to 3 million for a project and everywhere in between. Um, and I want to uh, just share with you guys what I learned because I think these lessons apply uh, across the board. So for those of you guys that are looking to get going in raising private money, um, private equity specifically for your projects, uh, this is something you guys may want to watch. So this money went into a 198 unit apartment building in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, we closed about a month ago and um, it was a fully syndicated deal, meaning we filed all the right paperwork and uh, filed it with the SEC and used an attorney to structure everything and everything was above board. Um, that's not one of the lessons that I learned because you have to do that kind of stuff. So that's like the first thing that I should just throw out to you guys is that if you're going to raise equity, you need to have an attorney, an attorney, an attorney, attorney, a lawyer involved in helping you um, assist with this with regards to SEC filings, operating agreements, making sure you're your documents are, are you know above par, on par and everything like that so that's number one that's not a lesson is uh, you have to use an attorney that's just a given that you have to use an attorney to structure these kinds of things okay so the first lesson that I got was um, was not every deal works right uh, and what I, here's what I mean by that not every deal works for, for your investors, okay? So I've got people that work with me on small stuff, that, that are not small, like quick stuff, like that'll, they wanna lend money and be in for six months. Uh, I've got a lot of investors that are using IRAs, because IRAs are phenomenal for quick in and out projects like that. Um, so the those investors, this was a, this apartment building, this 198 unit deal, um, is a 10 year hold, okay? Because why wouldn't you want to hold a cash flowing asset like that that's making that kind of money? Let's hold it for a long period of time. The debt is locked for that long too. So this is, that's a 10 year hold project. So right there, a lot of people said, ooh, geez, I don't know if I want to be locked in for that long. Even though we're going to refinance that building and return a large chunk of investor capital in year two, year two or three is when we're going to do, is when we're going to do that. Um, even considering that, and a lot of investors just didn't want to be bound up for that long. Not every deal works. Some investors didn't like Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's a big military town. Some people love Fayetteville, North Carolina because it's a big military town. Other people did not like Fayetteville, North Carolina because it's a big military town. The reason that the people didn't like it was because if the military were to remove that base, it would destroy the economy in the town. Is, the, that base employs like 25% of the people that live in the town, either as active duty officers or as support staff or as people that are indirectly supporting the base and whatever, right? So people didn't like that. Now I can tell you the, the, the base that's there in Fayetteville, North Carolina is not going anywhere ever. It's one of the oldest military installations in the, in the country and it's the largest military installation in the world. They're not changing, they're not moving it. But still, people kind of have a connotation about investing in properties that rely heavily on the US military. Understood, not everybody works for every investor. Um, there's other things that came up, but just what you want to understand is if, it, if you pitch a deal to a prospective investor and they tell you no, that's okay. Don't hang up the phone on them or walk away from the meeting if they tell you no. Find out, give me some feedback. Tell me why you didn't like this deal and tell me what you would have liked. I've had people that I propose deals like this to and says, you know, Matt, I'm really looking for something that I can do in six to nine months. Great. I put them in my private lender pool and I still do private loans to this day with those people because private loans are in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't even approach them for equity anymore, so any, any things like this. People will tell you what they want to see. So if they tell you no, ask them why and say, you know, what, what else would work for you? And it might be, I'm just not comfortable investing right now. Okay, great. We'll keep them in your database and your wheelhouse and maybe one day they'll come around, right? That's lesson number one. Let's put a little one there so we can know where we are. This is lesson number two. Um, so cool. Stay in touch. This one was interesting. 
um, because I, I think that uh, I had people that told me no, that said, you know what, Matt, it's not the right time. Not the right time for me. Uh, I've got other things going on. I've got this one guy had this big project he was going to invest in. He was investing in a new construction project. They were going to build this um, big like office and commercial center. So it sounded really cool, actually. Um, and he was going to invest in that. Guess what? It fell through. OK, um, he didn't think to call me immediately and say, hey, man, that deal fell through. I just checked in with him here and again to say, hey, just so you know, we've raised another, you know, another big chunk of money for the deal. Just so you know, I'm still here. Just so you know, um, because he's, he didn't tell me no directly. He said not right now. So no is different than not right now, by the way. OK, um, this is, no is no, I don't like it because it's in Fayetteville or because it's a 10 year hold or because I don't want to be in apartment buildings. OK, got it. I got your no and I will keep you in mind for things that might match your criteria. Good. Not right now is different. Not right now is I'm too busy, I had this happen per in my personal life, or I had this, I had that, whatever it is, but not right now is not no. It just means not right now. But it could mean yes in two weeks. It could mean yes in a month. So I had several people that showed up because I stayed in touch and I checked in with them and said, hey, did that deal ever go through? Actually, Matt, no, it didn't. Here's $100,000 for your deal because I was gonna put it in that one. You're good timing. I'm glad you called most of the time. That's, most of the, that's what they'd say most of the time when I called. Well, I'm glad you called. That deal fell through. People are busy. Their full-time job is typically is probably not investing in real estate uh, like it is ours. Uh, their full-time gig is whatever it is. They're doing whatever it is they do as a profession. So they're not automatically thinking of, oh, geez, that deal fell through. Let me call Matt. Not what happens. So that's lesson number three. Um, number two. Um, number three. And this is... This is whether or not, uh, this is whether or not they say yes or no, you want to always ask for referrals, okay? Okay, do you know anybody that might be interested in this? Now, people that told me no, people that told me not right now, people that told me yes. All three of those people, I always say, do you happen to know anybody else that might be interested in this deal? You know, anybody, 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 anybody. And as long as they trust you, if they don't trust you, that's a whole nother thing. And you need to address that and get to the core of it and find out why. But if they trust you and it's not the right deal for them or if it's not the right time for them, then they may be willing to give you a referral. I would say that probably maybe three to four of the investors that invested in this deal were referrals from other people. And one of them was a referral from a guy who didn't get in. The guy said, ah, that's not for me, but XYZ person may be interested in the deal. I called up XYZ person. This, my, my contact did an email introduction, right? It was a warm lead. And then we scheduled a phone call. We went back and forth, went through the offer memorandum. They said, yeah, this sounds great. And so I followed up a few times and they got in, right? And there was a referral from somebody who told me no. How amazing is that? Um, now, a lot of people that, that said maybe or said yes did get in. I mean, a lot of people that said yes um, referred me to, to other people, and some people that said maybe did that too. But you always want to ask for referrals for anything, anything, because if people trust you, they're going to refer you to other people that might be ready to get into your deal, right? So these are the three things I learned. Now, I, I know that there's, that there's other lessons out there for raising private money, and again, don't forget the legal thing. By the way, I'm going to say it one more time. Don't forget about having to have legal documents in place. And you got to pay money for these kinds of things. Don't trust somebody giving you their legal docs for free for raising a big syndication or something like that. It's just not worth it. You know, um, it's just not worth the uh, free is exactly what it is, what it's worth is zero. It's worth zero. OK, um, but you pay a few bucks for the legal docs for this and you get that. So um, now you guys might have learned other lessons for those of my friends out there that raise money or even ask questions about raising money in the comments down below. And I will gladly answer them for you. And maybe other folks can jump in and we can have a nice conversation about raising money. And the three things I learned in raising three million bucks for uh, my largest real estate transaction. I can promise you guys this will not be my smallest, not be my largest ever. I'm hoping to do bigger stuff like this and buy more deals like that because it's a really exciting project all the way across the board. And I'm really pumped that we were able to put this together. I was, uh, you know, pinch myself sometimes that we we're able to do it. Um, but, uh, but at the end of the day, it's exciting. And I hope the same for all you guys that if you want to take on this kind of stuff, you can. Um, but ask some questions down below and we'll get into talking about the nuts and bolts on how to do it. Okay. Thanks for watching guys and have a great profitable week.